move around resources, it, you know, activate resources enormously. It increases future output by giving reasons people to trust and move around resources. That's what makes credit and the proper working of credit socially efficient and valuable. Because it gets people to work on promises. As long as those promises are reliable and the promises you make are somehow, how can I say, calibrated to actual outcome, that is, as long as they're not Ponzi game, as long as you're not cheating, as long as it's not a, a scam, people get to work. That's why the credit system is essential. That's why a system, an economy, when the credit system Collapses, the economy collapses. That's the part that people don't understand. You don't want to save bankers, but you do want to save banks. Because banks is that network resource that allows you to do that proper. I know whom to lend and write and how, for what, blah, blah, blah. Right? And, you know, and I, I think that the development of the financial system has the increase of the, that multiply. The funny thing is never infinity. It's bound, and there's a lot of stuff. In particular, why? Because there are huge reputational problems, as the history of private banking has proved. Now, here there is a debate, and actually, if one wants to take that seriously, if you really want to be against central banks, it's because you want to be about private banking. It's, you want to be in favor of only private banking. There's a literature that interest. I mean, an old friend Warren Weber, people in Minneapolis work seriously about that, you know, banking in the periods of private banking, how they work. They tend to see the crisis as less relevant than I see them. I tend to see the crisis as much more relevant. I don't think we would have survived the last financial crisis in that era without central banks. Uh, I don't think we could have fixed it very easily. So Warren is great and uh, our own make are great, but I think they're wrong. But it's worth studying. So if you want to study, study. There's also a guy at George Mason, I forgot the name, I'm terrible with the name, I actually had a big debate with him a few years ago, has been just writing an interesting book on that in which he claims that central banks do bad, they're not useful, that private banks would self-organize and just work fine. No, I don't tend to think so. But, you know. It's a piece of economic theory and monetary theory of banking theory. You want to know it exists and study and take it seriously. Also because you, I think you understand where the problems are. Of Ponzi games, of, of, of the domino effect between I'm borrowing from you, she's borrowing from you, and we're all connected. And one of us, as long as one of us cheats, everybody goes belly up. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> so, be it as it may, this is a world without central bank. What's the big advantage of central bank? The big advantage of the bank that makes this constraint disappear. The one big advantage of central banking is that in, it, in a model in which banks do their efficient job of choosing which project to finance and which project to not, to not finance, that is, to compute correctly this, by firm, worker by work, and therefore understanding which law is worth doing. Here I say labor, right, but you can think of it as intermediate product, temporary investment, addition to the production <coughs> project. You know, the difference here is purely equities, K, okay, borrowing, L. Equities is equities. You put it in, you need to have it before. Equities don't depend on lending. Equities depend on past saving. Equities have to exist before they get invested. If you want to think in that term, that's the way you want to think. Equities is that thing that you already have. Bonds is that thing you don't have. And you can get it directly, private lending from another guy that had it. Or you can get it in a very strange form. You see what I mean? 
Imagine that some of that ADA is held privately by other household. You can borrow from them. But you borrow resources that are already produced. So you're actually paying your workers or paying your providers with resources. When you go and you go to that particular set of institutions that for a bunch of cultural, reputational and legal reasons have found a way of creating credible promises of future income, then you're actually mobilizing current resources without touching current resources by promising future ones. You're actually creating something that we have in the Varasian model, right? That you work and I promise to pay you, and then I pay you. That's what it, right? That's, it's a big difference. That's why debt is good. And contrary to the fact that people think debt is bad these days because it creates risk. And obviously it creates risk. What's the difference between debt and equities? It's the same that there is between having the egg in your hand or a promised chicken. When you put in equities, you put, you put an egg, you have it, it's here. When you promise me a chicken, well, it's a lot more than an egg, but it's a promise. You may be cheating, or we may both be wrong in good faith. So if we're lucky, we make a chicken. And if we're lucky, we get nothing. Right? Uh, but that's the real trade-off, and that's why regulation, that's why constraint, that's why you have a central bank that goes into a private bank and look at what they do, because it's the private banks that make the promise, is actually, in my opinion, useful. Art and Warren think otherwise. Surveillance, for instance. Yeah. yeah. All right? So you see what the central bank does here. It's very easy to put a central bank. You can use that. You, you have them in the notes. What the central bank does, it does monetary policy in this simple model, there is no government. In this simple model, this is central bank with the real bills doctrine. That's why in the reading list I put also the stuff in the real bills doctrine, right? Because how does it work? It works that the entrepreneurs go to the private bank and say, I need a loan for this. And they write down a promise of future payment, right? That's a real bill, right? the promise of future payment. I will deliver to you 10 sacks of wheat, okay, in six months time. And the private banks discount at the central bank window the real bills. Or, you know, in modern terms, you can imagine that what the central bank does go open market operation, you can write down the right and buy these corporate bonds and give cash in exchange right right you see what i mean and so eventually it's a central bank and then at the end of the period everything goes back and you withdraw all the money out of circulation all right this was a long lecture but we'll stop here if you have question or otherwise, we'll continue with electronic devices in the future. Just on the, when you introduce the central bank in the, in the modern slides, so you know, at some point you write, as the central bank decreases RT, so the interest rate, right, and relaxes theta T. So theta T. Uh, oh, yeah, because the model is a bit more complicated. Yeah. I, the and central I, bank, my point is. I mean, I just came through it, so. Yeah, there was no time to talk course. about that today. One point I'm making is, which is, keeps getting forgotten in the debate. Central banks, you said surveillance, right? Regu the regulation, right? Uh, in Italian it's called inspezione, inspector. Uh, central banks, uh, together with the Basel Committee, and, uh, do not only place open market operation, okay? That, so to speak, they change your portfolio for the bank. They do not only set interest rate targets for the overnight market, federal funds, or city. They also decide how much leverage you are. They also decide how much capital you have to have to take certain risk. They also decide what should be the ratio between the loans you make and the deposits you have. They have many instruments there. 
reserve ratio, capitalization, risk, uh, 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 you know, the Basel ratio. So they actually, so in an economy like that, it's very easy to see that the banks, so theta is the reserve ratio, basically. Actually, no, it's the, it's the Basel parameter in that model. Later on, I also have the reserve ratio when I let the money circulate, but I think in the version you have, it's not there. Right, so you can make, if you want to call it realistic, it's not a matter of realism, it's a matter of checking if those parameters are relevant or not. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the previous financial crisis had little to do with open market operation or monetary policy. It probably had something to do with the, with the persistently low short-term rate. And the fact the overnight market was very liquid at a very low rates so would allow people to finance overnight very long exposure in, in, uh, in, in mortgage bonds. But it was also the fact that we allowed a huge amount of leveraging risk, of, of risk taking on bank side in front of little capital. Okay? You can play the two, right? You can play the two. In fact, these days, in, in spite of an environment, where interest rates are very low and there's a lot of liquidity, you see the banks are lending a lot less. They're holding a lot on reserves. And I think it's because you know, the, the, the risk parameters have increased and capital requirements have increased, and so banks are a lot more careful at, taking, uh, at using all that cheap reserves to take this long position. So that's what I do. So, and I mean, this was actually was kind of a little bit area in your discussion, but uh, I, since uh, I think many people talk about this, especially uh, about the Basilea parameters of the fact that lending is procyclical, that's the cycle. Is, uh, cycle. Yeah, that's uh, if you want to study that, yeah, that's actually, uh, this would be true here too. I think this is almost an unavoidable problem. I think people that are complaining about procyclical lending are asking for miracles that are not in the pocket of anybody. <laughs> if we tell bank to lend more sense. in bad season, it's a perfect recipe for bank failure. So it's a sort of cost of... <laughs> Seems to me that we can try to attenuate, we can try to figure out all the inefficiency, for Christ's sake, we can try to figure out, you know, if maybe marking to market, when market are depressed, not for real reason, but for sunspot type reason is bad, everything you want. That's actually the main concern of Kiyotaki Moore research. Mm -hmm. uh, but it seems to me that uh, if recessions are not only periods of stock market or equities depression, but are also periods of whatever reason, investment are riskier than usual, we don't know what to do, there's a technological change, some things went wrong, uh, whatever, okay? We don't have a good way of uh, valuing things, blah, 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 or just there is nothing good to do, then recession should be a period which we don't lend a lot. <laughs> right? Because the, the problem is because Z is a bad shot. If that's recession. If recession is Z is a bad moment for whatever reason, then theory says, why should you lend? Yeah. If uh, you convince me that recessions are an artifice uh, of human mind, we can try to find a solution. But uh, it seems to me that when we make wrong investment, when there is over investment in certain sectors, and there are too many firms producing the same thing, and the market doesn't absorb it, that's real stuff. And in that case, you know. Uh, when a bunch of firms go out of business because there are better competitors, producing it, uh, that's, and, you know, and you create non-performing loans to keep lending. I mean, so the, the Italian banks try to be counter-cyclical. Mm -hmm. They kept lending in front of non-performing loans by hiding, pretending. We've seen the result, right? The result has been a bloodbath all across for 10 years. You know, they piled up so much shit that they didn't know how to get out. So I think in a reasonable model of banking, either recession is deception, if recession is deception, yes, we have to find a way to cure deception. But if recession is real, lending is countercyclical. You can make your risk model better, you can make your artificial intelligence better, you may become better at discriminating in recession, a good firm from a bad firm, sorry. Uh, but, right? but 
if he's good and he's bad, I'll lend to him and I don't lend to, to him. But that's the best I can do. If the majority of the films are doing poorly, there is no reason for me to put my money at risk. All right, guys, it was a pleasure. And uh, well, I guess we'll keep in touch. I'm back here at the end of July. So if any of you is in, around and wants to meet, I'm probably around here at the end of July. Then I'll probably be here also in fall sometime. For sure in November, maybe, or in a month or that I don't know. OK? Don't worry about the, your your monetary problems from Bocconi will fix it. No.